Welcome back. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandages here to talk to you today about Tropical Storm Faye, our sixth named storm of the season, and it's only July 9th. Keep that in mind because that date is important when we get a little bit further along here. Overall, six named storms, as I've mentioned, Faye being the latest. We started with Arthur earlier this year. Arthur and Bertha both forming before the official start of the season on June 1st. Only a few other seasons have ever had that happen. There's also other records here. 2020 par for the course, right? Edward, which was the last one, earliest fifth name storm on record. And then Faye is now the earliest sixth name storm on record, beating out Franklin, which formed on July 22nd, 2005. So almost two weeks ahead of schedule. And when we look at climatology, we'll go back here over the last several hurricane seasons. We typically see our sixth name storm not until September 8th, it's July 9th, nine weeks ahead of schedule here. Very interesting. It's already been a very active season, although no hurricanes. All six systems have been just tropical storms. Here's what we're focused on right now. This is Faye just sitting off the coast of North Carolina. It merged off the South Carolina coast just a few days ago and has gotten taken some time to get its act together, really. But winds up to 45 miles per hour, gusts up to 60. Moving off to the north rather slowly at the moment at seven miles an hour. And you look at it here on satellite. This is the infrared imagery. So when you're looking at the brighter colors, that gives us the temperature of the cloud top. So the reds and the black showing up here are colder cloud tops, stronger thunderstorms. The center of the storm is really right here off the coast of uh, Cape Hatteras. You're finding all the convection, the strongest of the winds, the heaviest of the rains, on the eastern side of the system, and that's because of something called wind shear that was really affecting it about 24 hours ago. It has let up significantly, which is why it has kind of gotten a little better organized. Here's how it looks on radar loop. You can see that spin in the atmosphere here, and another one developing off the coast of Hatteras. This is now the low level center there, taking over from an original low level center that was developing off the south coast of Moorhead City. There's visible satellite imagery, and I want to give you a close up look here and go back the last. 12 hour loop. You can see the spin in the atmosphere here. That was the previous low level center. That decayed, and we saw a secondary, a new center reform earlier today. And that is what's beginning to kind of flare up that thunderstorm activity, that convection. And there's Cape Hatteras. We're about 40 miles to the east, northeast of there. And it's moving at a northern trend at about seven miles an hour. Now we'll pull up the local radars out in Moorhead City, North Carolina, and Wakefield, Virginia. And you could certainly see that spin in the radar echoes coming in back here out to Wakefield and Moorhead City, showing that low level center moving off to the north with the heaviest convection there. Now, now, as it emerged off the coast of South Carolina, south of Myrtle Beach a couple days ago, it has been running into extremely warm sea surface temperatures. With tropical systems, that is the fuel for these storms to develop and strengthen. We've got temperatures in the mid 80s. You need 79, 80 degree Fahrenheit waters to really uh, help those storms use that fuel and develop. Well, you got plenty of that. And right here, that dark red, that's the Gulf Stream right there. Didn't quite take advantage of that, but I mean, you got warm water temperature no matter where you go. As it moves to the north, it will eventually be encountering cooler sea surface temperatures, cooler waters, less fuel. So we'll likely see it weaken as it heads towards uh, the New England coastline by this weekend. Here is the official track from the National Hurricane Center, the 5 o'clock advisory, the first advisory on Tropical Storm Faye. Again, moving to the north, it does start to pick up forward speed as it gains latitude and eventually heads into southern New England here as we get into late Friday afternoon into Friday night, bringing with it some pretty significant rain and the potential of some gusty winds. Now, we have seen out of the six named storms this season, three of those have impacted the Carolinas. Very, very interesting. We started off the season with Arthur that made it pass very similar close to Cape Hatteras where Faye currently is. Then we had Bertha that actually was named here pretty much like 20 miles off the coast of Charleston, South Carolina, then moved inland. And then, of course, we have Faye that emerged off the coast of South Carolina and is now currently located off the coast of North Carolina. So what effects are we expecting here? in the next couple days with Faye uh, around. Well, some heavy surf out there for sure. And this is gonna be something that lingers long after Faye lifts out of the area. Rough surf and rip current risk. Keep that in mind because it's a weekend in July and a lot of folks are heading to the beaches this weekend up and down the eastern seaboard, up into New England. So we're gonna have rough surf and rip current risk staying around for a while. Now, 
Rainfall totals to the south here, not a whole lot, especially in coastal Virginia, and North Carolina, maybe an inch or two at most at maximum, but really off to the north as it gets closer to the coastline and makes landfall somewhere, possibly in New Jersey. We could be seeing three to six, possibly more than six inches of rainfall here, as indicated by the GFS, the American model. That's just one model run. Keep that in mind, too. All right, that's the latest on Faye right now. Overall, this is not a huge event, not a very impactful event, but nonetheless, our sixth name storm of the year so far. We'll have more updates if, as they warrant as we head through the next couple of days. But if you have any questions on anything tropical, you want to find any other videos, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and on Twitter.